Hello, Meoni here, and welcome back to another discussion video for Final Fantasy XIV. This is something I wanted to make because I've had lots of things floating around my head in regards to this topic, and specifically, as you saw from the title of this video, I want to talk briefly about flying in old world zones. Now, in 5.3, which is scheduled for some time, possibly in July, we're not sure yet, and Square Enix aren't putting a nailed down date on this due to the fact they're majoritively working from home due to COVID-19, which is completely understandable. The world is in a weird situation. That should be sometime in July, but patch 5.3 has confirmed as of the 58th letter from a producer live last week. We got confirmation that old world flying, i.e. a realm reborn areas, will have mounted flying enabled which is something that not many people expected some people speculated on that and we had also more recently a small fix to the game where they added um, sort of like flying boundaries added to the game but most people including myself believed that was more of a bot preventative measure than anything else but it turns out they were indeed talking about enforcing the ability to fly in the future which is something that I think uh, Yoshi P has been asked previously on many occasions if they would ever consider the flying possibilities in old world areas, but they always have stated that the budget is a bit of a boundary or time limitations taken away from current projects and future projects that are much more, you know, weighty in design and much more usable for the majority of players. However, in their recent initiative, Square Enix have definitely sort of set the bar for what they want in the future and that's accessibility to their product which also comes with the a realm reborn revamp which was also announced in that same live letter this last week and essentially with that comes a few changes including flying so they're trying to homogenize a lot of the quest lines from the 2.0 to 2.5 quest series of the msq now if you can remember that far back or if you're a new enough player to remember it more recently essentially there's a lot of running around and back and forth and a way to you know facilitate the accessibility of new players would be to take a lot of that running around away now apparently 13 percent of that content has been reduced or removed depending on how you want to look at it but a lot of the quests that would initiate new npcs to the player are still in there so there's still a fair amount of running around even though 13 percent of that content apparently has been gutted and put on the cutting room floor now, to further facilitate that, they really want to add flying, uh, which is something that I didn't think they would add, um, primarily because, as we've said before, the time limitations, the budget limitations, but it seems that when it came down to it, selling more copies to new players was more important than simply touting sales and trying to get people to buy level boosts and main storyline progression boosts. Especially, I think, the bigger highlight of this was when Yoshi P is trying to associate new crossover deals with other people, like Yoko Taro, for example, um, had to play through A Realm Reborn, wanted to play through the game to sort of get a grip of it, but um, I believe there was a Twitter conversation where he himself, I can't find it right now at the time of recording, but was saying that essentially the 2.0 series is a, a bit of a long grind until it opens up. And I think the majority of players can agree that the game, whilst fun and engaging and has lots of lore, does take a while to get to where it wants to go story-wise before it starts heating up towards the end of 5.0, uh, 5 2.5, and then you have all of that lovely content towards heavensward as well and that's quite exciting heavensward is probably the best expansion they've done story-wise on you know it's just an opinion um shared by many people but for the most part it is just a good example of of what to do so what they're trying to do is make it a lot more like that so how does flying facilitate that so let's look at a, a zone in a realm reborn so let's take fanaland for example so how, what effect will this have on old world zones now that's a big question some will actually say that this will take away from the environment's exploration and its feel now for a new player you're not going to get flying until you finish the MSQ for level 50. So the prerequisites for flying that they've already talked about in this live letter are that you are level 50. Essentially, you have completed the main storyline quest for the ultimate weapon, which means completion of Castrum Praetorium, I believe. I think that's when you get that for defeating ultimate weapon. 
and also to complete the level 15 quest, My Little Chocobo. Obviously, that means to have a mount in general. So it's not like people are going to be going through the entire quest series with a flying mount. They're, they're still going to experience the game as it was meant to be, right? As we played through it originally when we were leveling, you don't get flying until after that's completed. And I think that's totally reasonable. If they had reduced it and made it so that you could fly from the bat, I don't think it would have the same feel um, necessarily that it will have come 5.3. So I would, I would, you know, go against that idea. For more regular players and veteran people who have already way past level 50 and already have all of the eligibility, like anybody else like myself, for example, at level 80, and we're playing through Shadowbringers, to the, the ability to fly in Old World Zones is going to be more of um, a taste thing, isn't it? Do you like the idea of getting between areas faster, or do you really wish that there were still those limitations? Now, considering that the majority of mounts in the game, I think all of the mounts so far, have a flight mode. Now, originally, if you remember, stuff like the uh, a Realm Reborn Extreme Trial Pony mounts, uh, stuff like that, didn't have a flying mode. And more recently, in the previous few patches, and indeed the expansions, uh, Stormblood initiated this, onwards to Shadowbringers as well, we did get the ability to fly pretty much all of those mounts, including the tank achievement mounts as well, like the lion and the bear and such. So it's not like they weren't preparing for this, but I don't think many people could estimate that they would actually put flying into those old world zones. But it does mean that there is pretty much no excuse to not have it other than the limitations of the zone. Now, one of the other things I thought was a limitation was 1.0 coding, but it turns out in a more recent patch, they've done a lot of terrain fixes. I'm not sure how many of you have actually done this, but if you go to sort of like Lower Lenosia and look northwards, you can see mountains now that weren't there previously. There's been a lot of work done behind the scenes that simply was undocumented changes in patch notes that, you know, they were completely void from that, where they've been working on this stuff in the background. So it's obvious what they've been doing this for now. So in terms of accessibility for new players and old, um, obviously this means that, you know, once you're hit level 50, you can fly anywhere you want to. But really, the only accessibility for older players who are way above this will be maybe to do some of the hunt ranks that they still need. Um, what else? Daily quests. I suppose those will be a lot easier now, being able to just fly straight across. Um, like the area in Little Alamigo, for example, and the Sigoli Desert. There's a lot of up and down verticality to those zones. So being able to do those dailies if you've never done them before at level 80 will be a complete breeze because you'll just be able to fly over those mountains. Now, a lot of the old world zones do have a pretty much A to B direct sort of route um, that doesn't really need flying, in my opinion opinion. And you have to remember that the mounted um, map speed increases that you can get, if you remember from hunt marks and the like like that, and the previous Moogle itinerant events, um, do increase the mount speed, but only whilst on the ground. So as you already probably know, uh, mounted speed on the ground does not affect it. Like those maps do not actually increase the speed of a flying mount. So technically in old world zones where going A to B was designed to be a straight road, will be faster to go there on a ground mount situation rather than taking off into the air. So at the same time, you have to ask if this is going to be use, like useful in all areas. But at the same time, this is just going to be more of an aesthetic thing, a sort of quality of life thing. You can just fly off wherever you want. Aesthetically, though, this does probably make the world feel a little smaller. And I think that's a lot of people's worry about this. Um, but at the same time, does it really impact things that great? I'm not sure. I mean, we can fly in Heavensward areas uh, for the most part. Uh, we can fly in Stormblood areas and obviously Shadowbringers areas, but through the first leveling process through, you get an experience of how big the zone is, and obviously those zones become smaller when you can just traverse giant mountains um, by just pressing the space bar. So I don't really see that argument. It is a little bit of a worry, because some of the areas were designed a specific way to only be ever seen from the ground. So I suppose some of the textures will be massively improved, like they have been doing, as, as I mentioned, behind the scenes. 
But there will still be a few areas that are rough around the edges, I would imagine. Like Mordona is going to be a real test to see what they're capable of doing, because previously a lot of the textures that you see, like the little mountains in the distance, were just tiny little PNG images with a cutoff halfway down. So I'm really excited to see what they can do texture-wise and how well they fleshed it out. And of course, the flight barrier, you know, meaning the maximum height, will be also interesting to see how that differs because obviously different zones have a different height barrier. Um, for example, Raktika has a very low flight barrier so that you don't fly above the canopy. If you could fly above the canopy of Raktika, then you would really see how small the zone is. But if you're forced below the canopy itself, then you actually feel like it's a sprawling forest that could go on for many miles past what you can with the current boundaries, which is a great feature of that sort of illusionary design. So, yeah, they did say also on the live letter that certain climbable terrain will not be climbable after flying is implemented in these zones. So certain parts of the terrain, certain mountainside bits, maybe stuff that you could usually wall jump on, probably they are going to become completely different textures. So yeah, I guess flying does mean that you can get to more places and see things from different angles, so they have to sort the terrain out just slightly, otherwise people are going to be finding lots of new ways of clipping through the ground, which is never a good thing in a game as heavily plagued by botting and uh, obviously hacking as it currently is. That's any MMO at the end of the day, but as, as hard as you can possibly make it, the better. You will also note that this is quite a nice preventative measure in some ways, for sort of the, the the hacking bots, potentially the new barriers um, will prevent it being quite as hackable as previous, I would imagine. I mean, has it really shown any reduction in bots from what they've implemented so far with a flight barrier? I'm not sure, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how the economy changes based on this. You would think, though, that if people were botting, the ability to fly between nodes would be much faster than it would to walk or go on a, a ground mount but at the same time a lot of the nodes for harvesting are very close together we now have the ability to hide um permanent permanent stealth basically for gatherers so in many ways they have made it slightly easier for gold sellers to go and create their millions from just mining the same copper node repeatedly but at the same time um it'll be it'll be very interesting to see the impact on that but yeah there's, there's one last point I want to cover before we wrap this video up, and this is a comment somebody in my Discord mentioned. I'm not going to mention their name because I, I completely disagree with this point, but I want to flesh it out. So this particular individual said that it's unfair to not have ether currents in these old zones. And that's, uh, that's the exact quote there. And their reasoning for this was very unusual. They said basically they should force new players to have to go through the same thing that we do, in those new zones when we get to them uh, to be able to fly. Now, there's two things that I would pose to this. Firstly, the law reason for flying in Heavensward onwards does make sense. There's destabilized ether, and you could, you could go down many different routes to explain why there would be a law reason for not being able to fly in certain zones, and I think that's completely applicable to this point. But at the same time, he says it's unfair. Now, the experience of a new player hitting level 50 and the ability to just get a mount, now, as soon as they hit level 50, they're going to be into going straight into heavens with content anyway as part of a, a realm reborn revamp a lot of the uh, emphasis has been actually awarding more experience that's what yoshi p said in the latest live letter to players to new players so that essentially you will no longer have to do any side quests at all in the game you could do level one msq all the way up to the final level 50 level um, msq quest and you will be level 50 or higher from solely doing that which is a huge change so i don't really think that they need to then jump through more hoops to get flying i don't think that's really something that needs to exist nor do i think it's unfair that they don't have to do something like that ether currents at the best of times are annoying admittedly but they serve a purpose as well for the new zones mostly to avert the ability for new players um, who might be on certain alt accounts to actually bot those areas have to go through the route so it further you know shortens the amount of people that are able to bot those areas they have to be on a max level account essentially for especially the last zones in shadowbringers etc that's one of the many reasons but at the same time there is the law reason and it's also the progression 
Um, it's a fun little mini game to some people and shows the ability to do that. One thing I think they should have done, however, is at some point I would hope they'd put this in in the future, is the ability to, once you have um, all of the ether currents, for example, in Shadowbringers for one character, it would be really nice if that entire account got flagged so that once you are level 80, it just gives you all of the flight points points automatically on an alt because your main character already has that. This is something that happens in World of Warcraft and has happened for the longest time when you have account bound achievements. This is not something necessarily that Final Fantasy XIV has. We have account bound mounts and stuff, so that technology is there because you receive the mails when you create a new character and you get all the mounts and stuff that are account bound. So the technology is there to apply something to all future characters but it is not currently implemented for stuff like that so that's something i would like to see in the future for sure but would probably alleviate a lot of those issues i know the person in question that made this complaint um you know this point in discord for me personally to read did point out that they have lots of alts they play on multiple servers so i can completely understand the frustration i have alts as well on american servers and japanese servers now so that i can track different things when they happen server wide and server events and things like that for videos but at the same time um you know it's just something i have to uh, jump through i wished it, it it was account bound but it currently isn't so that's something we can hope for in the future hopefully but yeah, I don't think it's necessarily unfair when you're going to be through that content so quick, you, you'll blink and you'll miss it sort of thing. That's the way I'm seeing it. 13% reduction to quest line, guaranteed level 50 without doing any side quests. Yeah, as soon as you hit level 50, it would be nice if they just give you a mount, uh, flying mount, and let you go up ahead and fly through those areas if you really want to do extra content. And I think that's what they've done. I think the attunement is a realm reborn in itself considering how long that's going to take in comparison to some of the more recent expansions but yeah there's there's my points there's my thoughts i thought i'd just sit down and uh, sort of record this live and share with you my interests i'm interested to see what you think about flying in old world zones i will probably be making a tea time video based on that and talk about some of your points so if you leave me a comment below uh, specifying if you like this or you don't like this, or why you don't or you do like this, and give some little bullet points so I can work through those into a video as well. And uh, yeah, thank you kindly for watching. Let me know what you think about this topic, and I'll see you all next time.